live. Everybody, uh, but we're also on tape. We are deep down in the bowels. Hi, Feliz Musica. <laughs> it's episode 113 of Kamloops last week. Christopher Folds, Magic Mike, and Bill at the controls. 13. <laughs> I, I was wondering if they were going to get more and more ridiculous, and, and I, I guess that answers that. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky number 13, maybe, I guess. It's my favorite number, and Lars Lindgren. Lars Lindgren. Former Canuck, stalwart defenseman. No relation to Matt's? Uh, I don't know. You should know that. You're the sports reporter. Max Lindgren also was a Canuck. His son played for the Kamloops Blazers, who was also named Max Lindgren. There you go. 13? Number 13? Yeah. I don't remember. I like that number. It's a good number. What about you for 13, Mike? In, uh... Is your, is your camera not? Oh, there we go. Yeah, in the Italian culture, 13 is uh, considered very good luck. <laughs> so this is a lucky episode, I hope. <laughs> I mean, not really. We're going to talk that's... about the, the death of our newspaper. So. Uh, but, you know, maybe there's going to be something that's going to rise out of that. So. Phoenix might rise out of it. Yes, yeah. yes that's yeah. true. And maybe our show, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. That's the Magic Mirror. It's brought to you by Volkswagen. We're going to have today, we're going to talk about Kamloops this week, which is closing after 35 years. It'll be the first time since 1884. 83. 83. That there's been no newspaper in Kamloops. It's crazy to think about. It's been our life for me for 15 years, you longer. Uh, we're obviously uh, upset and sad, and it's going to be an emotional show. We're having Kelly Hall on and Dale Bass to start. Uh, Kelly, former publisher of KTW. They're both now city councillors. Dale, former reporter, yeah, mentor. Yeah, yeah. Associate, Associate editor, editor yeah. of Cantaloupes this week. Yeah. We're also having Jessica Wallace on, KTW reporter. Her legend has grown for her great work that she's done over these last few years. Uh, and Dave the Hawk Eagles, who has spent who knows how many years documenting this city with his photographs. It's going to be emotional, like I said already. And Michael Potestio to finish things off. Sean Brady can't join us today. He's been a great addition to the paper, yes, too. Yes, Sean has been uh, very good. He's working on uh, actually the front cover of our final edition, which is it's an amazing, amazing cover. Throughout this, yes, you just showed our paper. So our last paper is next Wednesday. 25th. The 25th of October. And then we're done. Throughout this episode, I'm going to flash up pictures that we've scoured our archives for of just over the years, different reporters, different memories, and we're just going to flash them up throughout the episode so you'll see those uh, as we go through. Let's start with you. How are you feeling? Tired, exhausted, you know, we've had tears and we've had laughters and we have anger and frustration and it's just surreal. I'm still, my head is still, it's like in a fog. So it's like, uh, <clears throat> every, I feel all day like I do after a wine night. I feel like that constantly. And it's almost like you're, you're, you're hung over, but you're not. And you're just, it's just weird. That's all. And, and, and just, and, and you, you, you didn't realize, okay, well, this is it. What do we do now? We have to figure out what, what we're doing with your life. Then you also get all these messages from people and it'll, it'll die down. I mean, this week has been busy doing media interviews, both of us talking about what this means. And, and then, um, all the people like I've received, I can't even count how many phone calls, emails, texts from people who just are devastated. They they like the paper, they like the paper, but it's, I just feel, uh, it's weird, that's all. Yeah. The moments that you do kind of feel it all and it sinks in, what have those moments been? What have, what's kind of sparked them? Um, well, sometimes, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be walking in the newsroom and I'll see something like, uh, uh, I saw a ping pong ball the other day in the back and uh, it choked up because I remember, man, we had those epic ping pong, Friday night ping pong tournaments. And, uh, uh, and yesterday, um, Angela, who, who who does payroll for us, uh, accounts, she's great. She she was going through the back, and there's a door that was locked, and she found two big boxes of uh, KTW T-shirts we used to wear at the events around town. You go to events, you have the hot night in the city, and the boogie the bridge, and Canada Day, and we would be there promoting the paper. And <clears throat> so we have all these all these shirts. So I took a couple for myself, and and we're gonna actually hand them out to people who want to visit us on the 26th. So we're gonna have an open house. We're gonna have some hopefully some food and. Hopefully most of the staff will come in because <clears throat> a lot of us are working from home. And um, uh, no, I mean, <laughs> I'm there every day, you're there every day, but a lot of the staff, the graphic artists, they're at home. But hopefully everyone comes in on Thursday, 26, all day. We're inviting anyone to come into the, into the office just to say hi, to say bye, and maybe pick up a, sh a shirt, grab a coffee, whatever. 
<coughs> it'll be um, it'll be a nice day. Magic Mike, you are a longtime Kamloopsian, and I'm just wondering how this is kind of sinking in with you. Well, you, you know, I've only ever had ever had one other job. And that was a newspaper delivery guy. I, my route was uh, West Seymour Street to the uh, what's now the old courthouse. Uh, and the police station used to be down there. And, oh, yeah. and uh, I think I had 40 newspapers that would take me two hours to deliver. <laughs> did you always did I you talked always to everybody. Deliver? I talked to everybody. <laughs> did you get tips as you went along? Uh, no, but I tried to play games with people. And, and <laughs> I, I was just, I was probably in the history of newspaper delivery people the worst. Um, but you know what? It's um, having a, a newspaper, something like that, that's really specifically local. Uh, it, it's um, it means a lot, and I don't think people are going to realize w what's happened until until it's gone. Um, and it's um, it's tough. I, I know our conversations that we have here off camera too are, are really. Um, eye-opening and I've been upset and, and you've calmed me down Chris <laughs> uh, many times but um, you know uh, newspapers uh, those are the things like our guitar company we built that off of um, articles that were written you know I, I remember being uh, I think one of the first articles about our guitar company was laser cut guitars mm -hmm. and uh, we shared that around and, and that's what we helped to build outside of our community without a community voice and and things to share it's 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 going to make an impact yes. we decided that for our last issue what we're going to do is take memories like that from readers maybe they had a moment uh, a story touched them or a reporter came out to cover them as a kid or something and you've been collecting those so what stood out about those yeah uh, well we, we have we might have more than we could fit in the paper we have a lot i think up to we will but we're gonna have two i have 40 submissions various lengths just from readers then there's i'm writing something uh, our owner bob bob duel's written a nice nice ode to it everyone so we have a lot and and but the the weird thing that stuck stuck out stuck stuck out at me was this uh, I got this email I, I was doing a interview uh, on CBC Radio Kamloops this week early 7:30 and I'm waiting to talk to Shelley Joyce and I'm just going checking my email just waiting in the chair by myself and I got an email from this kid he's 12 years old and his name's Mason and it's through his mom's email and he just wanted to say he's gonna really miss the paper he started delivering it when he was nine and he's now 12. And it just it choked me up because he says, uh, my grandpa loves to read the news and sports. And I, and I love, after, after delivering the papers, I like to sit down and read all the sports and the hardware flyers. <laughs> yeah, the hardware flyers. And I just thought that was so sweet. And um, so it's not just, you know, the seniors who don't go on the Internet who are going to miss the paper. This is a 12-year-old kid who took his time through his mom to, to write to say that not only does he love delivering the papers, he likes reading your stuff and the hardware flyers. What do you think this is going to, how do you think it's going to harm the community most by us going away? I think we've talked about this ad nauseum, but it's, it's just about the stuff that doesn't get covered. You had an interview with Sarah, Pe Sarah Penton the, from the Kelowna CBC station. I listened to it on the way in here, and you, you, you said it perfectly. And this is not, not necessary to cast aspersions on, on other news outlets in town because they, they do what their corporate overlords tell them to do. So the reporters are fine, fine people, and they work work very hard but um, you said that you said guaranteed the stories especially the ones you covered the ones that people consider maybe not significant the ones about the hockey coach it means so much to the people who are being interviewed and, and people who are reading these stories this is it's about community oh I don't know about six years ago um, something like that and I got a tip from a reader that you got to go and check out this minor hockey team it's this is just kids it's house hockey they're not, none of them are going pro they're 10 11 years old but there's this kid and his dad's the coach and they finally made the final and the, the, the deal here is though this coach is on borrowed time he has he has cancer he's altering his chemotherapy to coach his son so i go to the game and <laughs> the team goes down three nothing and they come back <laughs> and it goes to overtime and and the kid the coach's son scores the winning goal to win this tournament and uh i just think and i was able to write this story and the, the coach died the coach died like i don't know months later so this kid's going to grow up with and the amount not just him but he's going to grow up with these these memories in the paper that he can go back and remember his dad from but not only that all the people struggling with cancer that wrote in and said that was inspirational you know that's the kind of thing that goes away
And the impact that has, you, like you said, nobody else is going to do that story because it doesn't. People don't read sports; they don't get the clicks. And and I said this before: it's more, it's more, it's about more than clicks and likes, and it's 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 about the lead and about the story and about community service. Yeah. We, we we we. I'm sure there's tons of stuff I've written, tons of stuff in the paper we did that that didn't register with with a lot of people. But if just one person is touched by the story, it's your duty to do that story. Yeah. And that's what's going to be missed from any newspaper we're, we're going out of business almost 10 years to the month that the daily news went out of business the Kamloops daily news was a great newspaper a really really good newspaper and um they went out of business in J january 11th 2014 and when they went out of business the community lost a hell of a lot too and we tried to make it make up for it we're a much smaller operation and now that we're out i don't think anyone else can do what we and the daily news did because it's a different type of journalism and it's just it's just sad, and um, I just, I just wish that the online ones that survive, I wish they would just realize that journalism is more important than clicks and likes. You probably haven't had time to really think about your life without the paper, but what do you see for you in, in the future? I have no clue. I can't do anything. I uh, else I, I wanted to do this since I was nine years old with my typewriter. I, I did. I, I used to write write stories when I was. Nine, ten, eleven. Neighborhood and then stories. Neighborhood stories. Had about the uh, the Bevan Garden Gazette and the typewriter I had was Eaton Four Hundred. I write about it in the paper on Wednesday. My mom bought it for me in grade six when I was eleven, and uh, it was revolutionary because it had not just a black ribbon, it had a red ribbon, and you can make the headlines in red. And I used to do that and deliver it to all the news boxes, but paper box. Anyway, mailboxes. I, I I think, and then I've I've only done this. I've never been out of work, but for six weeks when I was twenty and aimless in Edmonton. But I think. Um, you know, I've, I've done this since I was 20, 22, 24, and I'm 55 now. And I am so useless with anything. I had to hire a guy to come and fix a doorknob in my house because I can't, you know, someone said, go, go, go get a trade. I said, no, you don't want me in trades. Bridges will fall down. So yeah. um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no clue. We are talking, the three of us. I want to keep the show going. Yeah. The I want to keep doing this. Yeah. <clears throat> the last couple of years, this has been what's kept me going. Mm -hmm. I've felt a bit stagnant in, in my work life and this has kind of rejuvenated me and I love working with you guys. I love the recipe we have. I think we can do journalism, politics, news, music, sports. I think we can have fun and we can make a difference in the community doing it. Um, so we are talking about what the future looks like. So we're not done here, just so you know, and um, <clears throat> we're gonna need the help of the community. If you like our show, uh, we don't know exactly how you're gonna be able to support us, but you're you're going to be able to. Uh, we're going to be looking for, for sponsors and maybe we're going to be doing this through subscription, uh, some kind of model that we have to figure out. Uh, we, we might have uh, an investor in place that's going to help us get off the ground. Um, but anyway, Mike, just, just your thoughts on, on what we've been doing here. Oh, you know, I think that um, Kamloops last week, uh, when Tim Schultz, give give him a yeah. shout out, oh, yes. um, came up to me, you know, one of the things that was uh, really important to him is that he, he knew that you were looking for something and, and really wanted to uh, not lose you, as he said. And that was one of the reasons why we put this all together. And, and honestly, uh, at first I thought, well, it'll be kind of a cool little, little thing that we can do. But I, I've, I've, turn to really enjoy uh, Wednesday mornings and, and what we're talking about and it and, uh, gives me a, a greater in-depth look as to what's going on in our community. So, uh, you know, moving forward, I, I'm really excited about being able to uh, try to continue doing what we're doing uh, and, and maybe even expand on to it. So um, wouldn't it be great in a, in a perfect world if we could create something that uh, people would share and, and, uh, and, and subscribe to and, and uh, where we could continue to go in depth on all news stories that's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and maybe we can have uh, Jessica and Michael and, and uh, Dave uh, part of that team too when that in a perfect world, that would, be, would be amazing. Nice. Absolutely, it would be very nice. And um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm all in uh, to uh, whatever you guys want to do. I, I want to keep doing this. Uh, we have lots of lots of uh, followers. My brother Daryl is a huge fan of this show, and I'm, he'll be glad to know that we're going to keep it going in some form. Um, yeah, I I mean I I just picture us thinking bigger. I mean making sure we keep a local aspect, but also reaching out to bigger bigger guests across the world. I mean, you've got a big political base of of contacts. I have a pretty 
big base of sports contacts. Mike, the music man himself. Music. Who, who yeah. knows who we can have on our show? We want Eric Church. <laughs> Eric, that, that, that could be it. That could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, last night I was going through uh, our YouTube channel, and we've got obviously lots of videos on there. Um, but uh, it, it struck me the diverse stories that we covered uh and some of them got a lot of views uh, a lot you know we've reached a lot of people with, with some of them other ones had very very few well, and, and also too we, we were hurt because a lot of what you see on the youtube views we were using facebook as as mm -hmm. basically our primary um viewership avenue mm -hmm. what did i call it that you hate uh the word not consum myriad consumers um oh, i can't remember now consumption how are they consuming our show? Consuming our show. Yes. Um, and we lost Facebook, but luckily we have been building this YouTube base that's still there. And we lost our, our KTW Instagram account, but now I'm building up the Kamloops last week Instagram account. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start a, our own Facebook page. And we're going to have to talk to some people who really know what they're talking about as far as monetizing the show. And we're going to need advertising from the community. So let's start. I just want to start by saying thank you to our three prime sponsors who we couldn't have done this show without Terry low 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 rates is that L-O-W-E or L-O-W-E L-O-W-E from Volkswagen yeah. and they've come on board to sponsor the Magic Mirror brought to you by Volkswagen I mean incredible what that's their support let's do this let's give them a, a full page look at that look at that eh? oh, oh hold on <laughs> there there we go we, we appreciate everything that they do for sure and now almost two years almost two years Steve Rogers, Reese Wilson, Tim Rogers, Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center on the North Shore, the only appliance and mattress center on the North Shore at 948 Tronquille Road. Thank you so much for your support. And what about this? The best coffee in the world. Ba, 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 ba. I'd Brandy drink this Seacon. if it wasn't a sponsor, and I do. Brandy Seacon, McDonald's. We can't thank you Too all clean. enough. So good. And on that note, before this bad news broke, this last weekend, we were together and having fun weren't we mike we were yeah we um my my new dog nuno uh, after the uh, world's best guitar player nuno betancourt living guitar player um we were trying to teach him to uh, shake a paw and uh it, it was kind of uh it was challenging because it was it was mucky out oh, yeah, so we were much. getting kind of dirty weren't, weren't we Chris? oh yeah yeah we were down at the uh the, the uh, river street that, that dog park gets a little more mucky than most because it's mm. right by the river there. And I remember uh, Nuno, uh, he likes to, you know, nibble and bite and stuff. And he you does. were getting quite upset. And so oh. you were trying to turn, turn around and um, <clears throat> mud went all over, all over Everywhere. my clothes. He's got big paws, so, big furry things. So we yeah. jumped into the uh, VW. Where did we go? Well, we jumped into the brand new 2024 SUVs because they're here. The seven-seater Atlas and the five-seater Atlas Cross Sport. Mm -hmm. And we had to go to Gord's Appliance and Mattress Center because of the mess that Nuno made. All, all muddy and We were mucky. all just, we were caked in mud, all of us. And Folds, he could not understand the rates. He doesn't understand how low well, they Well, the are. interest rates are going up in, in, in the Bank of Canada, so I thought I was going to spend 20% for the interest rate, and plus the waiting list. The Volkswagen rates are so mm -hmm. low, low, low. And you know how your dog was... It was shaking. Yes. That's yeah. what they do at Volkswagen when they make their deals on their cars. So we went over there and they were just making deal after deal after deal. How many electrics do you think they've sold because of our show? Uh, I'm going to guess. Um, do you want monthly or lifetime? Lifetime. Uh, 58. 58. The money that Terry Lowe has because mm -hmm. of our show. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It is incredible. And we went to celebrate, didn't we? Yeah. Where did we go? Went to McDonald's. Yeah. Absolutely. What did you order? I ordered a, a coffee and uh, I went into the play area while you guys uh, talked to adult business. We did. And we all played Monopoly. I ordered a McMike. You did. And I did not get my Ford Walk, which is, I think, Niagara Falls or something on this thing. So we were at Gord's too. Don't forget that. The Big Appliance Fall Sale. The like Big that. Appliance Fall Sale is here. Mm -hmm. The Electrolux laundry towers, the Frigidaire wall ovens, the induction cooktops, the refrigerator. You can mix and match, Mike. Uh, you know what? Get two appliances. You save two, honey. Yeah, get three. You save three, honey. It's like, it seems amazing. And you could take them to Siki if you want <laughs> to put them in a new uh, thing out there. Yes. <clears throat> what a weekend, guys. Let's move on now to, what are we moving on to? I think we're moving on to the title of Hastings. Right, Bill? Yeah. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Bop, 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 bop. Yes, How are you doing this morning? Good, sir. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Got a question for you. 
Just go ahead. If you're gonna go to a funeral, what's the best McDonald's meal for a funeral? Uh, happy meal? A happy meal. Oh, that is perfect. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Not this one. You know, I'm, I'm not going to get a Happy Meal, though. I'm going to order two two medium coffee, please. Uh, both with two cream. One of them decaf. That's Kelly Hall, my former boss, my former landlord. Lived in your basement for a few years there. This is Dale Bass, my former mentor, still a mentor. And both of you were linchpins of KTW. So we're having you on. You're the former publisher. You were the associate editor, I believe you worked oh, your way up to. I don't know what I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to have you on just to talk about the paper, which is going to be no longer. So Kelly, let's start with you. When you heard the news, what were your thoughts? Oh, it's, it's devastating for, uh, obviously, the people at Camels this week, but also the community. Mm -hmm. You know, um, loss of a community newspaper, the paper that chronicles the history of the community. It's just devastating when you hear, you know, that this community will no longer have a printed version. Weird, eh? It is. Mm -hmm. And you're on a different side of it now. You're, you're on the city council side. So have you had some chats with councillors and got a feel for how they're feeling about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, nobody's happy about it, to be honest. I mean, um, you know, sitting, uh, you know, in the horseshoe uh, really gives you an, a, a real good perspective of, of the news that you guys do for the community. You know, and the passion that you bring, you know, for uh, the community news, mm -hmm. you know. Dale, I know it's been a tough week for you as well. Um, yep. Emotional. I mean, what were your thoughts when you heard the, the news that it was officially done? Nothing that I could actually say publicly right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, ironically, Kelly and I were in a meeting at the time, and he showed me the, uh, the text, and I immediately go to my phone looking to find out who put this false statement out <laughs> um, and then saw what was going on. And you know, and I've been asked this question, Marty, ever since, uh, and, and I'm, I'm angry, but I don't know who I'm angry at. Yeah. Um, and I'm totally worried about you and the rest, and you. Yeah. Um, and I'm tired of watching an industry I put, well, I started 50 years ago, killing journalism. I'm just tired of it. When did you start at KTW? 2000? Yeah, yeah 2000. 2000. Yeah, yeah. And ironically, I did not apply for a job in the newsroom. <laughs> Where did you apply? I applied for an on-call paste-up job and went in and uh, Darla Gray was there. She says, oh, yeah. we looked at your resume. That he needs a reporter. Go talk to him. <laughs> yeah, so and then I was there. What did it mean to you, your time there? Different than working in a large Ontario daily, definitely different in so many ways. Um, and I, I posted recently, I think I did my best writing there because um, it, the focus was different. Um, even though sometimes he didn't want to give me the time that I, I was taking to write stories, Christopher always did. Um, and in the daily in Ontario where I work, you weren't supposed to be part of the community. You have to stay away from it so you can stay objective. But in a community newspaper, you're part of the community, yeah. which is why I now have an enormous number of friends who I actually wrote about who um, years later are still friends. And you did lots of volunteering with various yep. places. Both of you did. Yep. And, um, yep. and, 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 and kept, kept, that yep. kept the community connected to that. What's um, yep. Kelly, when, when you were there, you, you came and got me. You, you hired me. I, yeah. I, was, I was a reporter at Abbotsford News and I and I was with my f young family down there and you called me out of the blue to say hey do you want to maybe talk about possibly coming up here because the former editor was my former editor uh, we knew, knew, knew Gord Kernoff so you came down to, you were in Richmond I was at an editorial right. conference and, yeah. and we met sort of, sort of secretly in a hallway there we and, did. Um, <laughs> and we talked about it and we and, then, and I was like well I don't know if I want to go or not and then you offered me the job and we sold our house and came up here and one day we drove up here one day March March 24th I think it was and uh, we toured 13 houses and drove all the way back down there. The Coke, Coke was closed, we, we didn't have snow tires anyway, so we, went down. <laughs> so we came, left at five in the morning, came back at one in the morning, massive headache. We bought a house that day. Yeah. Bizarre, it was very yeah. bizarre anyway. Yeah. And, 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 and the canvas was so different then. I mean, you could take a left at a Save on Foods because right across wasn't, uh, wasn't winners, it was a go-kart track or something. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it, it was. And, uh, yeah, it was so, toppers. So much has changed. But anyway, yeah. I, I just wanted to mention that. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't, have, I, you know, I wouldn't have got divorced enough for you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and I wouldn't have gotten remarried to a very wonderful lady because of you. So, thanks, man. Yeah, it's it, it's funny because you, you you tell that story and it, it seems like it was just yesterday when yeah. I was, you know, in your office talking to Gord Kurnoff and and I was very upset that he was leaving us. He's, he was a, a good journalist, a, a good editor, um, a really interesting guy. Mm -hmm. And I just, I remember asking him, I said, if there was one person <laughs> that you would hire to be editor of Camels This Week, who would it be? Chris Foltz. There you go. So I got in my car, drove down to <laughs> Richmond. <laughs> And you're right, we did meet secretly, yeah. and um, I sold them on the benefits of Kamloops. Mm -hmm. You know, young family. I knew you had a young family, so, yeah. you know, uh, I knew that he was, you know, interested in, you know, a, a smaller community, bringing, bringing up his family in a community where he could, you know, afford to own a home. And fewer gang and, shootings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and lo and behold, uh, the rest is history. Yeah. Well, that and was it, your best hire. I think that was your best hire, because Folds well, changed, changed the landscape. Well, yeah. it was good. It was, it was yeah. a good team. It was a very good team. And I remember when I moved here, all my friends down there, my family says, uh, oh, man, you're going up there. You're going to, you know, you can, you can go ATV riding. I don't do that. I oh, can go hunting. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fishing lakes. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. but I do golf poorly. And that's, that's one good thing. But, about you know, what Chris was very good at is, and you alluded it to it a, a little bit there, Marty, is he is very good at hiring the right team, you know, getting good people, you know, uh, and getting the most out of those individuals. You know, so you could sit back and, and my job as publisher when I was uh, the publisher of the paper, um, you know, I, I remember sitting in on editorial meetings. I know the editorial individuals would sort of bristle. Go, yeah. <laughs> he did not like you. <laughs> what, the, what the heck is a publisher yes, doing here? Get out of here. You know, but I could leave it alone. I didn't have to worry about that side of the business because you could trust it was in good hands. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you and, could we had, go. and we had lawyers, so we're okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and we had to use them once in a while. We did, we did, yes. Yeah. And never successfully sued, I'll say that. We were yeah. sued, but never successfully. So. What, just more about the impact deal. How do you think this hurts the community? Hmm. Well, from a city hall point of view, um, we won't have that avenue to uh, advertise public hearings, things like that. But I don't care about that, okay? How is that going to hurt the community? Because journalism is is a key component of democracy and a key component of communication and a key component of telling the stories that maybe you don't want to hear but you need to hear or telling the stories that y you really should hear just because they're cool you know i've been telling i think a lot of us have been saying all along and with no disrespect to any of the rest of you without jessica wallace nobody would know about tnrd um without your writing nobody would know in this community would know that there's another side to sports that's not fun, that's sad, that, that's harmful. Um, and so, so we're losing all of that. We're losing all the in-depth as well, because you can't do in-depth in, in, broad, in broadcast. You just can't, you know, and not be objective. So we're losing part of our soul, definitely a large part of our heart, big part of our soul. Kelly, anything to add there? Yeah, I mean, um you know, the electronic news, you get 20 second, you know, news bites. Oh, you know, yeah. the, the beauty that, you know, print has is you can really dive into it. And, you know, Dale touched on, you know, that one story that Jessica did in TRD. She initiated changes that need to, yep. needed to be made at the TNRD level. Yep. But not only that, I look back to when Dale Steves was, oh, uh, Bushman was, Bushman. was looking at uh, the story of the Bushman. Yeah. And I remember the police coming into our office, yes. you know, demanding to have the, the tapes, yeah. the source. Yeah. And, and, and the, those types of stories, yep. I mean, the, the double murder homicide, uh, uh, suicide oh. done on McGill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the government that, office. Oh. Yeah, the government office. Yeah. That mean, was awful. I mean, those are stories yeah. that, you know, grip the community. Yeah, and hold the community yeah. together. And yeah. and the, those stories are important to do. You know, in, in these days of online, they're there. But you need you need to slow down and and, and, and read think. impact. And yeah. and it can be done. But you mentioned in your interview with Sarah Penton, it's when you have a model online that is all about clicks and clicks and likes and eyeballs. Yeah. You don't have time to do that because it's a it's, it's you're trying to trying to get the clicks and yeah. you don't get the you don't get the depth usually. Those are we're talking about some of the bigger stories, and I think about. The more the minutia that we lose, the, the for me in the sports, I think sports. It's the it's the minor sports, yeah. mm -hmm. it's the high yeah. school sports. The high yeah. Yeah. It's the the kid who gets to see their name in the paper that that validates them and gives them belief yeah. in themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the number of people that have been reaching out to me the last couple of days, it's been to everyone who's reached out. It's been like it's in this period of time, it's been meaningful yeah. because people have been people have yeah. been impacted.
Yeah. 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 Like the the importance of having photography, you know, yeah. in your newspaper is critical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I mean, to your point, Marty. I mean, all of a sudden, it becomes fridge art. Yeah. To say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. It was, it was fridge art of you know, um, you know, the uh, grandma and grandpa put up the the, the the pictures of the kids playing soccer, mm -hmm. you know, or the food drives that you know maybe you know some you know kids are volunteering it. It's hard to tape an iPad to the fridge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Dave, 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 the Hawk Eagles deserves credit. He's been documenting the city for 20 years, uh, longer it, than I've been more. Here, yeah. And yeah. The, Alan Douglas as well. LED. Dave told me yeah. about an email that he got from somebody. You know, that was his pictures in the paper. I don't know if it was a man or a woman, but. It, what it meant to them to see themselves mm -hmm. represented in the paper and how much it gave them a boost. You know, just mm -hmm. things like that. Th those are the things that go. It really is odd though, you know, the papers, the papers di died. A lot of papers are dying. Oh yeah. And then, but e even while, you know, people know that and, and people who may not, may not support it with advertising or may not, they'll, they'll call and say, hey, um, is, is my letter going to be in the paper? Yeah. I got one last week. Yeah. Well, I got lots of letters, but it'll be online for sure. Well, can you get it in the paper or or, or, oh, or a yeah. hockey team? Can, can, can you get our scores in the paper? paper. Yeah. It's it's our you know it's in this old method that people still no. it's yeah. different, right? But anyway. Well, it's like people <coughs> people have Kindle, but they still want to have real books. Yes. I mean, I'm I'm a big problem with that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've got it, loads of books on my Kindle. I also got all the paperback copies too. I do not do the Kindle, but yes. Well, I, I do because saying. I travel. Yes. yes. Yeah. Any memories that stand out for you? Well, for me, I mean, you know, joining in 1992, I think it was, and I went to 2019 or 2018, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, it um, it built the foundation for my business success in the community. You know, without it, um, you know, I'm not who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the the mentors that I had along the way, the people that I looked up to. Uh, the Don Moores, the Linda Hootens of the world, mm -hmm. the, the Bob Grangers <laughs> of the world. Oh, crazy Bob you know, I, I didn't this know This guy him. here, Chris, yeah. you know, the, the job that he does and he continues to do. Um, that's That's been important to me, to be able to say, you know what, I've uh, worked alongside some pretty impressive individuals and I've been able to take snippets of, you know, their, um, you know, personalities and, and work habits. Dale? Memories? Ah, uh, too many. Yeah. Mm, the ones that are the strongest are also the, the stories that were the hardest. Yes. Um, those stories that I unfortunately live with uh, every day still. Um, You're talking, I'm talking addiction and. I'm talking of the last day. Yeah, I became the go to for, yeah. the dead, for yeah. dead kids, right? Yeah, that's right. And, 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 I, I liked writing them, I lo and, and I, I love the families that are still part of my family, yeah. but I hated them. And, and the damage that those stories did to me, I didn't recognize at the time. It wasn't until I got out of there that I realized that, that, that yeah, they were great stories, they were wonderful stories. That you just basically say, ask one question, and then they all pour yeah. out their hearts. But, but a, I still live with these kids. It's a testament to you that people trust mm -hmm. you with those stories, though. And the uh, problem is they kind of grow on each other because people, yeah. you can, people can, they see that you've done that story before and they, yeah. they, they say, okay, she handled it that way. Yeah. She's going to handle my story that way. And you yeah. become the go-to person. Well, you know that too. Well, that, um, yeah, there's that kind of happened to me after you left. There's after a you few, left, I know. The Brady Dalkey and Paul Adkin and yeah. these stories that you, that you never forget and the interviews that you never forget. And those people live, those dead kids live with you. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So there's that, you know, but there were some really cool stories. I interviewed a lot of really cool people that, yeah. on the entertainment side, you know, my, the, the one that really stands out is Mavis Staples. Mm -hmm. You know, she'd only did two interviews in Canada the year she was touring. One went to uh, actually a friend of our family in Hamilton and I got the other one and I had to t not do Fangirl. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's <laughs> Like knife is staples. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really really cool. She's a really cool. Yeah, person. you do get a lot, ton of cool opportunities too. It's not all yeah. you know, doom and gloom. No, There's no, there was some fun really stuff fun stuff. stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, knife is staples. John yeah. Oates, you know. Yeah. yeah. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, you know, yeah. I have no recollection of interviewing that guy. You interviewed him, and it was on I the know. speakerphone, in our, and we're all gathered around, and you're talking about <laughs> How do you not remember that? I don't well, he, remember uh, it. Well, he gave that uh, that donation to the homeless chap. That yeah, was who was reading story. his book. Who was reading his book, and, yeah. and it wasn't until you told me that. Yeah. I don't even remember. I yeah. remember the story. I remember Dave yeah. doing the shot. Yeah. Yeah. I remember doing the first story. I don't remember this dude calling me, yeah. and I consider that... Good. How did you track? How did we track him down? How he did tracked he, us down. He tracked <coughs> us down. Okay. Well, yeah. What happened was uh, Dave the Hawk Eagles <laughs> yeah. grabbed a great photo of yeah. a homeless guy reading the Art of the uh, Deal oh, outside yeah. the library yep. with yep. a bunch of stuffed animals. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Dave took a picture, but then he thought we, we used to do these three hundreds. He's like, so let the, allow the reporter to try to write nice, nice stories. So he did a three hundred, yeah. which is three hundred words, really tight. 
and he, and he submitted it, and it was in the paper. It was just a neat little story. A reader cut it out, mailed it in the mail to Trump Tower. That's wild. They worked <laughs> his way up the mailroom somewhere to his assistant who thought this was a good PR for Donald Trump. This is the Trump of the apprentice days, not of the, the, for, day, not, yeah. not the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was very famous. And it got to him somehow. And then they sent us a letter, and they sent us a check for $1,000 for him, which I thought was a little low for a <laughs> rich man. Yeah. But nevertheless, nice, nice, nice thing. And then we called back, and can we get an interview? And they were like, hey, Mr. Trump's very busy. But then he phoned. And we all gathered around, and it was pretty exciting. And you were at the desk. I have it in my mind. You were there, and we said, put it on speakerphone, and you're taking notes. You got a really good little paper there, he says. <laughs> he was leafing through the paper, because I like the paper. It's a good paper. And then, of course, he says, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm probably the biggest fan. You're a bigger fan of me, probably. You know, he was, he was into that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, it was so cool. Oh, yeah. was, was I blunt neat. and honest and said, drop dead? No, because at that point, that we didn't. Point, no. he wasn't the political. He was just no. this sort of carnival, you know, yeah, I didn't pseudo yeah. billionaire. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he I wasn't as hated just, back then. Simply don't TV personality. That. Yeah, TV personality. Yeah. He was harmless, so we thought. So Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Was that? yeah. Donald Trump. Yeah, very. That was interesting. Yeah, and one, one, just one. That last light thing. You mentioned Dale Steve's story on the Bushman and the yeah. Sushrup. The co coda to that, and this is before my time, but as yeah. I understand it, it was a scoop of the century. Yes, it was. they got this. They got this John Bornstrom first interview. He yeah. snuck out on a boat. The paper came out on what date? September 11th. September 12th. Yeah. Oh. And what happened the day before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and Dale Steves mentioned that. I think yeah. he sent a members in. He says, you know, it's the biggest story that was completely forgotten because of the terrorist attacks, yeah. like yeah. timing wise, eh? <laughs> yeah. So, another story from yeah. that. At, when he was coming back from the interviews, he stopped at our house because he was completely freaked. What do I do with these yeah, tapes? Probably, probably oh, yeah. Just, you know, so he gave them to my husband <laughs> and said, you hold on to them because when I go to the office, the cops are going to show up. Uh, and they, they <laughs> eventually did. And yeah, they, they did. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so then he and Alan worked it all out and got into the lawyer's hands. But yeah, that was that was a fun story. And I think this, we could go on for hours. Yeah. You know, this yeah. could go on for hours talking about and this And you guys have stories. a big meeting to get to. We yeah. have a big meeting to go Absolutely. to, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, well. Thank you for coming in and talking to us. We appreciate it. Well, thanks, thanks for being. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for yes, being thank there all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. We might you. keep this thing going too. By the way, so we'll be calling yeah. you in to ask to grill you about city stuff. Yeah, so. we'll get back to okay. the regular show uh, as we go forward and hopefully grow it. And uh, could be irons yeah. in the fire. Could be irons in the could fire. Could be a big we one could, in the fire. Uh, you know, yeah. This could be sort of maybe the uh, uh, yeah uh, legacy of, of the of the paper. Yeah. Yeah. We're, okay. we're actually hoping you can reach out to Trump and ask him for <laughs> donations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike, I didn't, do you have a question or anything, comments before we let him go? You know, I, I, I agree with the sentiment. It's, it's, uh, it's a sad day. It's uh, when I first moved back to Kamloops to open up the music store, uh, the guy that I remember welcoming me to Kamloops was uh, Dave the Hawk Eagles. He took a wicked picture of me <laughs> with our security mirror and, and did all this kind of stuff. And just uh, even as a, as a young guy living in Kamloops, I remember uh, being in the newspaper. I was a, a, a media AV club slut back then. <laughs> uh, not not really the AV club. No. I just you know it was just that was something. You're right. You pin it up on your yeah. your fridge. Yeah. You send it to grandma and grandpa. Um, we uh, when um, the president Tony Clement yes uh, came. Uh, my mom said, well, "You can't play guitar. You think you can make it on on both newspaper covers? Uh, you know you'll, that'll never happen." And I did it once <laughs> with yeah. Yeah, playing guitar. <laughs> so, you know, like those things really uh, stand out. And and the whole um, that's just the the small impact that you make on on people, everyday people. Mm -hmm. But the the long form journalism is um, that's that's the thing that's really yeah. really sad. Yeah. Uh, so I I don't know how we're going to. Uh, uh, recoup from that but um, uh, yeah so anyways it's great seeing you guys <laughs> okay hey Reese what's going on here I don't Maytage it's the French spelling <laughs> That's just we're bilingual in this house the Maytage man <laughs> Gord <laughs> okay this is a spooky secret deal though what's going on here yeah we've got a used and completely rebuilt um, Maytag bottom mount fridge they actually don't make any bottom mount Maytags anymore, so this is a pretty good deal if you're looking for something simple but still reliable. What's um, bottom mount? Freezer on the bottom Ooh. instead of the top, because I find people prefer having it on the bottom because you spend more time in the fridge than you do in the freezer, typically. I've never thought about that before, yeah. which I prefer. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, as you can see, like it's an older fridge, but it's in mint condition. Our techs have cleaned it out inside out and all the parts are working and everything. 
mint mint condition and it's on for only $4.99 which of course is also still negotiable it's negotiable oh yeah Ooh. We're, we're flexible you can swing a deal down here at Gord's Maytash <laughs> and Gord's Maytash <laughs> And of course it comes, all of our used appliances do come with a 90 day parts and labor warranty. So we'll still take care of you as much as we can. Did you go to the movie theater to watch T-Swift? <laughs> did I? How yes, I did. Good? It was amazing. There was people dancing in like the aisles and they were just having the time of their life. Were you in the aisles? No, I was sitting. Okay. I'm lame. I was too scared. Was the Maytage man there? <laughs> Maytage man. <laughs> I am the Maytage man. <laughs> okay, get on down to Gord's. That's a good deal. And it could be even better. Two of my longtime co workers, good friends, Dave Eagles, Jessica Wallace, the longtime photographer, Dave the Hawk Eagles, and Wallace the Intrepid Reporter. Dave, just your thoughts in general on, on what's happened lately. The, the paper's closed. How do you feel about it? Yeah, it's a sad time. I think um, I, I'm uh, feeling like most of my colleagues, where we're just, we sort of had some idea that times were tough, but always felt that there was a position the paper could could keep, could keep us in where we were working and um, you know for me it's been a lot of years uh, and I've seen a lot of people through the paper and I know that not just the staff now that have that are that are currently working but those that have gone through uh, Camelot this week some great reporters and editors and and staff have also uh, are experiencing this and going through a tough time so um, mm. I think of them too but uh, yeah we had uh, we had Kelly and Dale on a second ago, and they were talking about you. And Magic Mike was talking about you. You you greeted him when he first came to Kamloops. The number of people that you've greeted and had an impact on. Um, what are the messages been like lately from you know people reaching out to you? Uh, they've been great. Um, I've been you know I'm not real active on Facebook, but uh, that's sort of where I've been seeing some messages, and then also recently just through through other social media. They've been really supportive of what we've done and what we've been doing, and uh, I'm getting a lot of real positive, you know, uh, responses. People just saying, "Hey, you know, whatever we can do to help." Um, I think I think it's been great, and I and, and uh, yeah, that's what more can I say? I think uh, a lot of people in the city have, are, uh, have expressed their shock and sort of disbelief that it's happened. Not just journalists, of course, we we sense and, and we get those messages probably more directly. But uh, the general public really are starting to wake up and go, well, yeah, this is real. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to something that we can do in the city that could carry on a tradition of, of great journalism uh, that we've been doing, along with other media as well. But, and we'll hopefully that could happen. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wally, just your general thoughts. I know it's a tough time. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, I was going to really try to hold it together, but it <laughs> failed right off the You didn't even get to say a word. <clears throat> um, it's been, like, really up and down. Like, there are times, I guess. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, we had, the, we had a newsroom meeting the other day, and this is kind of what happens. This is why I'm, I'm okay. not good even. I'm just, okay. I just... It feels like it's been up and down, like a lot of the memories are coming back, and then I feel kind of proud of us. And then um, I think about the whole in the community, and I listened to your CBC interview the other day, and it really captured it well. The lone paper in Kamloops, like the, and to not have it, and the service that you brought. Just tell us a little bit more about the, the conversations you've been having. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I just tell everybody what an honour and a pleasure it's been to to be trusted to document the, the sports history of the community. I mean what a place to work. And I just thank everybody who's given me a chance to um, interview them and the, about some of the most intense subject matter that you could imagine. Parents talk to me about their, their lost children. And it's those things that are no longer going to be covered when these types of things happen. I think, I mean, on a, on a smaller scale today, in today's paper, we have a story about these two 11-year-old ice dancing skaters. And they were so fired up because they're the first uh, female pairs team to ever compete in British Columbia, right? I mean, and that's not a huge story. That's not a glamorous story, but to them, it means everything. And these are the type of things that, that are going to go begging because I can guarantee you online outlets who all they care about is clicks and views are not going to send a reporter to go and cover this little story. And what that means for these, these kids is they don't get the validation that they sometimes need 
or that sometimes spurs them on to big things. I just had another person email me today about, I remember when I saw my name, uh, the single A basketball tournament you know, in 2005 and what it meant to me. I mean, it's just little tiny things you don't think about. Kids seeing their names in the paper that um, it's devastating to think about that dwindling away and being gone. Just what won't get covered. I have a list of stories in my phone that I've constantly on Matley. I've just been adding these things that I'm seeing not covered and I'm I've been thinking about stories in my head, even with this Airbnb policy that just came out. I have questions and, you know, the new Build Kamloops committee. There's all sorts of stories that are here, and I'm just really hoping that somebody's going to pick up the slack. Um, I'm also just feeling a bit of a crisis of faith, I guess. Like, Chris and I, four months ago, I don't want to, like, toot our horn, but we were in Ottawa being basically recognized by the Governor General of Canada and among some of the best journalists in the country. I got to meet Robin Doolittle, which was <laughs> like a fangirl moment for me. And um, yeah, right before I came in here, they were tweeting about us and our closure. So it kind of also riled me a little. Um, we were all dressed up in Reno Hall and my family was there with me and Catherine, Chris's wife. And we were you know, eating canapes in Rideau Hall and being recognized for the highest quality journalism in the country. And four months later now, we're closing. So I don't, I know newspapers are having a tough go. It's not really a shock that much in terms of, you know, we hear of closures all the time and journalists losing their jobs. But you have to think that something of quality We've been recognized for quality journalism. You have to think that that matters and that means something. And right now, I'm kind of just... Like, people are telling me, like, yeah, you still have a future in journalism and that there are jobs out there. And, like, to be honest, I just... Like, it kind of just feels like, did it mean anything? All those nights that we spent going back and forth in the middle of the night, all those days when we were getting flack, frankly, the days when I wasn't even sure I could go into the TNRD boardroom with no other reporters there and 26 of like the smartest politicians in the region and it's just me going in there and feeling like, can I even do that and face them like I think what I'm doing is right, but can I go in there and, you know, keep my head high and be strong like that and continue to ask those questions and thinking that you're doing it for the community and for the right reasons and then and then being acknowledged at that level like yes this was important and you did it for a reason and now it means nothing well, like so what's the point it does it does mean a lot i think it's uh <laughs> it's, it's like what dale bassett earlier she's angry but yeah. she's not sure who she's angry yeah just angry that it happens and it's like and that's the most yeah. frustrating anger is because there's there's really you, there's no you can't there's no one to blame it's just society it's just changing things it's it's weird. Tara Holmes, uh, you know, uh, she, she, she's angry too. She posts on social media and she's like, you know, she's angry too. And she's calling on people to, you know, to the whole shop local mantra should, uh, in everything, you know, media, yeah. stores, everything. But anyway, I, I, it's, it's you, an anger. You, you, you know your work changed lives. I mean, that's been evident in this past week. I mean, everybody's been reaching out to you. I mean, you, you, you know that. So you I'm got, just, I'm, I'm going through waves like yes I know that what we do is important like don't get me wrong but it's also feeling like does that even matter like I was thinking about my dad and my mom they just retired after 35 years of owning a business in Kamloops and 20 years ago Mike Cornell wrote a column in the Kamloops Daily News yeah. about my parents and my dad had found a wad of cash on men's night up at the old Aberdeen golf course <laughs> yeah. and he kind of stood up in the clubhouse that's now community center and said hey did anybody lose this mike cornell like you know you probably want this back and it was his rent money there was like a thousand bucks or something i can't remember how much it was it was a lot of money in his wallet and apparently mike was just sweating it out thinking oh what do i do so he he turned around and wrote a column about my dad being you know an honest mechanic and and we like our family still talks about that and how significant that was 20 years later it like i know that it means something but it's it's hard to it's hard to reconcile the fact that we're being honored for quality journalism and then four months later we're yeah done yeah it's two sides of the business right it's it's the journalism and the business side of the business and sometimes they don't reconcile Eegs, are you able to understand your impact 
Uh, yeah, even just this morning, my wife, before I left the house, said, brought her phone over and said, look, I got this uh, e email from a, a colleague, former colleague as a teacher. She said, uh, and, and I said, really? And she goes, yeah, look at it, look at it. And it was a picture of a, you know, a weathered and yellowed um, cutout of one of our newspapers, um, standalones of a, of a guy down at uh, the skate park in the air. And she goes, um, Basically, this woman had just put her son's picture back up on the fridge, had found it, and thought it was important, put it back up. He's now 30, 32, and I think he was eight years old when I took the photo of yeah. him, or nine or ten. And um, stories like that remind me that what I've done in, over the years um, as a photographer has basically been chronicling. I've always thought of this as my role is to chronicle the history of the city through uh, visually through visual record. And that kept me kind of grounded in that I was... Um, when there was a push early days to uh, record the things that were really eye-catching or sensational or the things that like car accidents and and fires and things like that initially what might draw a photographer into a news into the news realm um, I kind of went beyond that and I found that there was a real significance in presenting life as it happens and so seeing the backstory to things and going to events and that sort of motivated me over the years to become more of keeping my eyes open for the things that were happening that were some of the good things as well as some of the obviously horrible things that happen in tragedy in people's lives which we record so over the over the years it's kind of got me to that point where I would go out and look for those good moments of people doing things and um, yeah, it's impacted lives because you're, you're recording a moment in people's lives. Those moments get put up on, on a fridge as, yeah. as, as art. And I remember also a woman years ago coming up to me in the park and said, do you remember me? You, you know, that woman over there is, not, is my daughter. And she was probably mid-20s. And she said, well, you know, you took her photo of her doing something and we had it up on the fridge. And in a family of three other, I think two other siblings, which were girls, she, she uh, was always the, the flower yet to bloom and kind of yeah. become fine herself but when you when you took that photo it went up on the fridge it sat there it motivated her to change and become confident and and uh, I just want to thank you she said I thought wow yeah. that's that's the the behind the scene things that you benefit from whether you're a writer or an editor or, or a photographer anyone in the in the print business of getting a message out it's so great to hear that because yeah. that that's a lasting impact so um, yeah I, I can say I feel good from where I sit now to uh, knowing that that uh, that my, I've had a chance to impact people's lives, right? It, it's weird how these big events, you kind of forget about that while you're doing it. Like there's days where you don't want to go to assignment. There's a day, I don't want to call this person. I don't want to write this brief. And you at the time, you're like, oh fuck, I don't want to do this. But then you hear these little stories about what that meant to these people and you remembered how important it was. And I, even things like our newsroom meeting the other day, um, I talked about on that radio interview, like how we were sitting around crying, but we also laughed, you know, like. Yeah. And that. Uh, <laughs> just be. You, you, it's like you, a you guys are going to miss that shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's and like it's, not just, it's not just what they see in the paper, it's not just the stories. It's, 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 and this is true with any business that has to go through a death. It's, it's, the, it's the things that, it's just the interactions. You know, a lot changed during COVID, right? A lot changed. Our business, the COVID killed our business. If you did the truth of it, it, we were doing fairly okay until COVID, and we never recovered. Like a lot of businesses, not just media, but it also changed the dynamics of the of the workplace. And there's still stories galore out there about working from home and hybrid and all this. And and I've noticed it a lot. And uh, yeah, there's benefits to it, but man, there's nothing like there's nothing like a newsroom full of people who can turn around and talk, joke, rib each other have beers afterwards, have the ping pong tournaments on the Friday. Nothing like it. And um, <laughs> Mike's never been invited. Oh, what? This. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, was, this was pre KLW days. And like the thing about the newsroom is you are experiencing firsthand, or at least witnessing firsthand, really intense things all the time. Yeah. So we are, you know, attending a car crash or, mm -hmm. you know, covering wildfires or hearing about some person who died by overdose or we're interviewing people in their you know and we're hearing about things that are so intense all the time so to have that support group and kind of we we almost make like dark jokes sometimes and yeah, it's yeah. just I think a coping <laughs> type mechanism in the newsroom and we lean on each other and we kind of it's it's like holy man this just happened and you're all, it's almost yeah. like a dark humor because it's the way to even just deal with what we are yeah 
firsthand hearing. Well, how many times did I have to run after Dale Bass because she's like, she'll, she'll do a story or hear something and she would just start screaming oh, and crying and then maniacal. Look at me and I have to go and say, what's, what's <laughs> Or like that? laughing yeah. and you're like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, actually, emotional, I, very on, emotional. On that topic, I have a little clip that we can play, but I wanted to tee it up first here. Dave, do you remember when you ruined my day? You know what? I think that's how Marty became used to calling me the hawk because that sort of was driven through that moment. Yeah, I do remember that day. What, what do you remember about that? Um, this goes to, you know, the kind of staff you work with and how sometimes you have to respond to people. Uh, Marty, being a junior reporter at the time, um, was, was taking photographs with a company camera and he had, he had taken it on a weekend, uh, actually on a Friday, and I was working on the weekend back when I was doing Saturdays. Uh, and he kept it overnight and, and I texted him or I guess back in the day phoned and said I'm coming over to get the camera. Probably was a text because I don't know if he responded. Anyway, I showed up at his place and I look at his truck, his car and the windows down and I go, wait a minute, there's the camera laying on the seat just open. <laughs> Two windows are down. Like thinking bender? Hmm, how did this all happen? <laughs> so anyway, I grabbed the camera and I think, should I go knock on the door? No, no. And then it came to me. Uh, why don't I just take the camera, go to work, text Marty about an hour later and say, look, dude, you know, um, I need this camera, as if I hadn't been there. So long story short is I basically lied to Marty that I, I had the camera and was using it, but I told him I didn't have the camera and that all my day's events, I said, look, I've met Keith Anderson from the Daily News and he's loaned me a camera, but the downside is every photo I take has to have a caption, a byline of Keith Anderson Daily, the Daily News. <laughs> it's going to have to run on our paper like this, Marty. <laughs> so all day long, he's searching for the camera. Well, I had a rugby game that day. You thought it was stolen, didn't you? And um, I thought it was stolen, and I, I, and I was going to have to pay the, pay the company for yeah. the stolen camera, yeah. and I ruined Dave Eagles' day, and I had the worst rugby game of my life. They call me gut fakes because of my gut. I was dropping balls yeah. everywhere, knock on city. At, to the, you never told me the whole day. And I ended up having like a million beers that day. Yeah, and I was yeah, so you depressed. Did. You did. And I gave you a little phone call. Yes. At, at 1.30 in the morning. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You, you recorded that phone call. And this is what it sounded like. <laughs> no. November 27th at 1.37 a.m. Tunes going in the background. <laughs> so I forgot so so to tee it up properly because you you told you had told me by that point so that that you were lying to me. So, so you, you found out that <laughs> you were, you were taught a hard lesson and ruined your whole day. He yeah. took the camera to teach you a lesson, and then you got really drunk and <laughs> left that message. Yes, <laughs> there were a few more of them too. I think over the, over the <laughs> weeks to come. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. But good. those are the kind of moments that. That's great. It just shows you the camaraderie of staff, and uh, we've had many times where you know, countless this week, we've been able to do that. You know, right through the whole uh, contingent of staff, through company barbecues and maybe ping pong tournaments and uh, lots of stuff. Lots of great things have happened, right? Yeah. People rally together. Yeah. I think as much as they uh, they work hard, they play hard too. Well, a lot of assignments. How many assignments have you been on together? You know, just driving out to places you don't yeah. know. What, oh, that the goat, the goat deep oh, goat, the goat thing. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Goats, all the Riding in the back of a truck with Darshan Lindsay up someplace. Oh, way in Campbell Lake with, with uh, some. You know, just kids taught at home, homeschooled with their dad. It just felt kind of very uh, surreal. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I loved going on assignment with you. Yeah, it was fun. We've had some great times, I think. Yeah. Marty? What about what's next? I know there's some things that you don't want to talk about and maybe some things you can. Any idea what you're going to do? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not quite 65. I'll have another year and a bit. But uh, I think I'd still like to work. And whether it's related to this field or others, I mean, I've had a 25-year career with the paper plus, and 20 years prior to that, I did a lot of um, hospitality service stuff. So that's in my blood. And I think I'm open to different things. Uh, I still want to work a few days a week. You know, I could work full time. I could work three days a week. Um, 
But I no more I'm photos. Probably. You're done with. You're done with like. Yeah, weddings. I'm not. People would say, "Oh, you got enough skill to get out there and, and, and sell." Your, and do, I'm not really. I don't really want to start a business where where you're managing um, photos because for me, I've now in my later part of my life, I'm enjoying grandchildren and uh, two great granddaughters, uh, four and four months old, and they're nearby in Kelowna. So I want to be able to see them. I want to have time and. Um, you know, doing weddings or doing events as a photographer, you're usually working key moments of summer and and, yeah. and uh, weekends, and that's my time. Oh, that's you're lake. Fishing. That's lake and fishing that's, time. That's where I'm going to be knitting swe Marty's sweater. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you heard it here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Wallace, any thoughts on your future that you care to share? Um, I honestly have no idea. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really don't know. I. Uh, the last couple of months, like, I have been kind of involved in the talks behind the scenes, right? And um, it's been a little stressful. I've, I was thinking about pumpkin spice latte walks with my son and fall leaves, and it basically turned into Zoom meetings and tears. So um, I kind of want to just, like, lay low a bit and see, maybe just, like, go for some walks with my kid and yeah. think about it a bit. Um, got some messages, and it's nice, and I really appreciate it. I just, I don't really feel like, obviously... You can just tell by the state of me on the show. I yeah. just kind of don't really feel ready to even really think about it yet. And I'm like battling mastitis for the second time in the last couple of months. I've just been really stressed out and I need to just kind of take care of, Yeah. take I, care first and then maybe think about it and I don't know. Actually, I thought this would be a good time to talk about this guy and what he's meant to all of us. Yeah, that would be great. So does somebody want to go <laughs> and start? <laughs> okay, I guess I can go. This is... Um, yeah. What do you say about Chris? Because he's just the man behind the curtain. Nobody ever really understands the impact that he has. He is the newspaper, to be honest. Um, we're just all, you know, more in the public than he is. He uh, is the brain. He <laughs> is the person who puts in all the work. He is, he is the newspaper. He like, he doesn't get any accolades and it kind of frankly ticks me off. My, my best moment was when I got to see him at Rideau Hall speaking in front of everybody in such a, he was the only person who made everybody laugh. Like he was the smartest person in that room. Um, yeah, he's obviously been more than a mentor to, you You described him as a father-like figure and I would agree with that. Um, I'm the same age as your dad, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Blows me away. My dad is older. I think you're the same age as my mom though. Okay, well there you she go. She just turned, she gets the She's, she's excited now. about that, we get the CD. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I, just, I honestly can't picture working without him. I feel like he and I have worked as a really good team on these investigative pieces because, I mean, I have the energy and the gumption, and he has the the the, the big brain and the historical knowledge and the context. And um, a lot of times when uh, we're working on kind of a, a query or a question, I'll go to him and we'll play off each other. And, you know, he'll kind of be the person who figures out how we can do something and then I'll go after it. So I honestly feel like we, I, I don't really s even see myself working without him in a way. Like it's, it's hard to even picture staying in the media world without having like, yeah, yeah. he's my, <laughs> yeah, well, and the number I need of, him. <laughs> the number of people that he's influenced by proxy, you know, like the, for every one of you, there's all these people that have come through, all these reporters that have gone on to other places and influenced other people, right? Taking what, taking what he's And you he's look taught. at, okay, so you can say, oh, Jessica, you won a Webster. Like, whoop de doo dot Under Chris, how many Websters were won? It's because of him. You're going through this newsroom, and it's his influence from the top down. Um, I also saw this thing going around about leadership, and, you know, it's not about... Leadership is not about saying to people, you know, do this and do that. It's about showing. And Chris is in the trenches every single day. He'll rewrite the friggin' press releases to keep it away from us. He'll take the flack, keep it out of the newsroom. He protects us. He protects us. And I think that's super important in terms of maintaining the editorial standards because as soon as I get a text from a politician on a Saturday night saying, oh, this is a horrible story. Like, I feel a bit taken aback. Chris takes the brunt of that every single day for all of us, and we don't see even most of it. I've covered his uh, job on multiple occasions. It's thankless. It is stressful as friggin' all hell. And 
you know, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about Chris. I just, I don't really see. I, 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 this is the other thing that pisses me off is I don't see the journalism f world in Kamloops without him because he's a steady hand. Like when I'm losing my marbles, he, is, he's a logical. This kind of person, he he can keep the the but boat he, from rocking too much. He runs hot too. He's got the PBR. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's Tina Turner on his Tina keyboard Turner. and. You can hear him from a mile but, away, but, but I know he, what you're saying. He is the steady hand. Yeah. When you go and you say, "Oh, this, this, this," and then he goes, "Well, what about this?" And so I I have a hard time even thinking about what journalism looks like in camps without that steady hand. The glue guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm same, same way. For me, it's my role has evolved over the years from uh, you know, main photographer to doing less photography and, and as the papers shrunk and and uh, there was less staff, I became more uh, writing community-based stories and even some feature stories. Got a chance to do that. And I think for me, it was always great. Chris learned pretty early on how to um, release the reins a bit and give you more leash and uh, and let his newsroom have that privilege of feeling that they had some autonomy in what they were doing in the, their direction and um, and so and he also n knew when to be able to feed you stories or assignments that kept up with your the way you work and everybody works differently and I really appreciate that appreciate that about Chris is that he um, not only did he you know do that but through that happening, it encourages you and it lifts you up to kind of go, yeah, I, I can tackle this. I can become a, a more of a journalist than I realize. And for me, it was evolving into writing. And and uh, like I said to him two days ago, I walked into his office and said, Chris, how do you spell? Oh, you're mannequin. A, a mannequin. Mannequin. Because there's two different types. Ma a mannequin. Go ahead. Uh, can you spell mannequin, Mike? <laughs> No. Well, well there's, <laughs> there's two. It was a story about 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 these these mannequins they work on at True, and um, and right. and and he rightly came to me because it's a weird spelling. And what what we what, what he didn't know was that a mannequin in a store is spelled differently than a mannequin used in a surgical setting. It's Surger it's K, not a Q. And you asked me that question. I asked him that exactly. question. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I walked back, sat to my desk, made the correction, and then I, it struck me. I thought, that's when I got choked. I said, this choked is up. Choked up. <laughs> Choked I my head in there. I just came over and choked. No, and, and, I, and I, so I said, I should tell Chris that. And I said, no, it's just too emotional, too personal. And I got up and I said, I'm going to miss that. And he said, miss what? And I said, just those moments of being able to walk to your office and become back smarter than I was when I first you know, came in the office that morning. And uh, yeah, those little moments of, uh, and, and I was going to miss, because Chris always had an answer and always, always gave you more, imparted his knowledge to you openly, right? And I think for writers, for... Everyone in the business has benefited from Chris Foltz. And he's so detail-oriented. I mean, if you want to just, like, piss him off, just say something is in Aberdeen when it's in Sahali, because he has a map on the wall, and he's yeah. looking at it, and he said, oh, no, it's right here. <laughs> I remember Tim, Tim Petrick to this day will we'll never say we, 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 our office is in Southgate. It just no, it didn't exist, yeah, and exactly. I said it's right here, it's <laughs> Southgate. <laughs> <laughs> and I, in fact, when I write up stuff like you know, a quick cop release, and something happens, I make. I always think of Tim Petrick, and I always say, uh, "It happened at the Walmart in Southgate." <laughs> <laughs> I know. You I know Petrick's reading that he's going to be. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay what, what, what's Chris's favorite, most used word? Myriad. Oh, myriad. myriad. Yeah. 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 Myriad. Yes. He's well, right. we could go on forever. Michael Potassi is outside waiting, though. It's ten o two. Not that we really care. He can be out there for longer but Just let um, him wait he's always late anyway. yeah he's always late he won't be here actually <laughs> okay well thank you both thank for coming you. in that was good lightly angry a little angry a little sad absolutely i have give a question me a mic? how do you know that mannequin used in surgical procedures is a k like how did that? Uh, you just interested in mannequins one day. Could be a fetish that we day? don't know about. <laughs> it's all about words. It's like how do you know that this is an input or output cable? I'd probably le le electrocute myself doing your job. Yeah, so, uh, yeah maybe. That's all. It's just something you know. Right? They're both yes. fetishes. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting thought. Yeah, mannequin. Mm -hmm. Two different words. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Got. Okay. Let's leave it there. Volkswagen. Das Auto. Michael Potestio. Marty. Okay, thoughts in general. How you been feeling? Ah, it's been it's been up and down, and it's been up and down for a while for me as we tried to, you know, navigate this process. And you know, was there a way forward without closing? And you know, what could we do? 
to potentially change things up. So it's been a really, uh, probably one of the most stressful <laughs> couple of months uh, in my life ever. And it's, um, I, th I think a lot of it, when you're starting to kind of realize things now, you kind of think about different things that you weren't thinking about before and, and what this might mean going forward for the future. So it's been a whirlwind. And you had a different uh perspective on it because you were involved in the negotiations as the shop steward for the union as the union and our owner tried to come to some kind of mm -hmm. solution so you were trying to work <laughs> and it's hard to work when you think this paper going to close for all of us but more so for you because you had to you had to cover council you had to do stories and then you had to go to these meetings and you had to do all this all these all these negotiations which is shows you the reality you knew more than most that this is a, you know a perilous time right yeah, it definitely hurt hurt the job, and um, you know, being being the shop steward and kind of like seeing it. Maybe they didn't really do it. I, maybe I just saw it earlier than most folks. You know, it just felt like we were kind of caught in the middle of of a really bad situation that we couldn't find a way out of. Monday night we were at the Central. That was the final straw. A depressing Monday night at the Central. Yeah. And you've had I guess four days since then to get reaction from friends, family, community members. What have the messages been like? I mean, they've been very sweet. You know, people have been reaching out and whether by text or by phone call or uh, in person, people have just basically said, you know, that they, they feel really sorry for me, that, you know, they're gutted to hear the news. They know I'll land on my feet and they're confident everything will, will work out. And I'm very appreciative of that. Um, it's also felt like I'm kind of like attending my own funeral in a way, <laughs> but, but uh, it's, been, it's been sweet. It's been, well, bittersweet, I guess, given the circumstances. Yeah, because you, you did five, five years in Merritt before you got the, the call to KKW? I did, I did five years in the minors so before I got years. called up to the bigs. <laughs> uh, I got called up in 2018, and I remember my first day, I don't know why I was so nervous. It was back when we had the three rows of desk from the old nine reporter yep. days, and I was right in the middle behind Dale and um, I didn't even say anything to anybody I was just talking with Dale and Marty comes around the corner with the with the camera and he just snaps a photo and I look on Twitter and he says the return and it's just me <laughs> sitting there <laughs> but this, this is like a job that you have loved though I mean that was a big deal for you you're a Kamloopsian through and through right? North Kamloopsian I mean, North real, Kamloops. Kamloops. real Italian real Italian, real Italian. Yeah. North Kamloops not one like those South Shore guys mm -hmm. uh, but yeah no it was a big deal for me everybody would always say like Oh, so what's what what's next? Are you gonna go for editorship, or are you, you looking to get into a bigger town? And it's just like, I, I kind of like what I'm doing. I, I I love my hometown, and I love news. But I think more than anything, I like reporting on my hometown. And so it was it was kind of a, a dream job for me, really. And now that's been ripped from you. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel <laughs> absolutely got it. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's it's really it's really too bad because. It was, I mean, whether, it, it was great in Merritt, too. That's the other thing. You know, Merritt, it was a great community, bedroom community of Kamloops. Great so newsroom was, down there. I it was, it was the awesome. Set. It was cool, yeah. We're all, like, in one bullpen yeah. down there. And in Kamloops, it was great, too. Like, I got my start at a J school, um, interning at KTW. Yeah. And, frankly, like, when I was still in J school, I wasn't sure, like, what I wanted to do. I'm like, do I want to just get a degree? Do I want to do sports? Do I want to do news? Do I... Am I interested in broadcast? And I think right from the get-go, meeting all you guys and seeing what you do, it just made me fall in love with uh, with the with written journalism. And I've just loved it ever since. It's been it's never felt like work. Yeah. What are you gonna miss the most? Um, you know, the, the job's great and and it's it's stressful at, at times. You know, there's a, there's some really amazing stories you get to do and some amazing people you get to cover but um and some you know sometimes it can be a really stressful hard job other times it can be very rewarding and i'm gonna miss it so much but i, I think most of all i'll probably miss working with all you guys just uh, as a team mm -hmm. you guys um, i probably wouldn't have done 10 years in journalism if it wasn't especially for you two guys specifically um you really helped me out showed me the ropes and you, your professionalism really made me love the job well, you've done a hell of a job, Mike, and um, hopefully you can keep going. Do you know what you want to do next? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm open to whatever. I mean, we'll see what comes. It's, I always, I was telling somebody the other day, 
because ever you know, from the beginning, everyone's just like, you know, you know newspapers are dying, journalism uh, might not be that long, so maybe you should do something else with this. I thought, well, yeah, I like the job too much. I'm going to keep doing it. And I, I would think to myself over the years, is like, do you want to look at, you know, doing something else, maybe something with more money, maybe something with more job stability? And I thought to myself, I just, I can't, I wouldn't be able to just like kind of take myself out of this out of this career you know unless I had had to for a different career on on my own accord so I always thought to myself like if it's gonna if if I'm gonna switch careers it would have to be because the paper closed so I feel like it's kind of yeah well this is the this is the problem this is why there are a dwindling number of reporters because it's enticing to go and take a comms job where you're where you're making a decent living and your hours are not crazy and you it's a safer job yeah. and that's what happens. People leave the business. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it becomes more of an option when you realize, like, do I want to go work somewhere else where my job's not safe and I'm going to make shit money and work all hours of the night, or do I want to make a make a make some money so I can actually start a family? If you ever find a girlfriend yeah. like me, um, oh, you're, you're, you found a girlfriend? No, 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 no. I'm still oh. unemployed and single now, so I'm a catch. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on my my Tinder profile. Huh? Yeah, you guys, you get me do a dual Tinder account. <laughs> should we leave it? There? Should we leave it there? Or? <laughs> you, you got a question, well, I, Mike? I, I, I was gonna say, you know, if, if you can't find love, you guys can always just that, hang out and cohabitate. That's we what could. I was that, yeah, that'd sure. be kind of cool. Share the rent. Get a place together. I'm sure there's room in uh, in Mike's mom and dad's basement. Yeah, we could peel a saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that a is that a North Shore Italian joke about uh, living? <laughs> Yeah. I'm in my ba my family's basement plenty right of now. Room. Hey, Michael. <laughs> plenty of room. <laughs> Who's this? Okay. Well, Mike, it's been a treat working with you, buddy. Thanks, and, buddy. And uh, good luck Thanks, to you. Thanks, man. Volkswagen. Das Auto. It's an old school logo. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's the different font. Right now, we're a Gaudi font. Yeah, that's a, that's a sans serif font. Interesting. What? Good talk. Serif font. You talking fonts? Yeah, we're talking fonts. So <laughs> is this where you get fired up? Wow. No, 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 Comic Sans Serif is the best font ever in the entire world. We were always told well, never, never, to, <laughs> never to use that ever. Yeah, like, absolutely. <laughs> okay, that was probably our most up and down roller coaster of a show we've had as far as uh, emotional outbursts and anger and tears and that kind of thing. We kind of thought it would be. So how are you reflecting on the show, Chris? It was nice. It was nice to see. Uh, it's a nice take get all the emotion out. I know Jessica would lose it because she, she's very emotional right now and, um, and rightly so. And I like that Kelly and that Kelly, that Kelly and Dale were on the show because they, they sort of, um, well, like I said, Kelly brought me up here um, and, and, and I work with Dale for probably 13 years and, um, and she's, uh, they're just great people and um, leading our city now, which is nice. I think it was, it was just a, a good coda to everything that we're doing here. So, Mike, any thoughts from you? You know, there's a huge uh, human aspect to this, and I think that's what we saw today in, in the in the show. Um, a lot of people had poured their heart and soul into what they're doing. It's it's not. Uh, it's kind of like being a, a sound engineer. It's not always about the money. It's it's about doing what you love. Yeah. And you could see that in in all of you guys that it's um, it, it's like. <laughs> Chris, like typing on a typewriter with red hair. Yeah. You had to retype each one day every mailbox you were sending out. You know, yeah, like yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize there was that CC, the carbon paper back then. So I would type, <laughs> and then I would type in. So uh, you know, like this, this is the the hard part. You know, and and I really hope that everybody finds uh, a great space that they land in because um, the journalism that you guys were doing uh, is was was top notch yeah you know actually yesterday I was looking through all the photos and you some of us we look like we're 10 years old mm -hmm. you know like young like a grown up grown up in the newsroom mm -hmm. and I all just echo what everyone said already about you you know I've said it already on radio broadcast about being a father figure and a mentor to me and uh, Jessica Wall said it uh, it's tough for me to picture my life without, without you in it. So let's keep going if we can. Yeah, let's keep this thing going. <laughs> let's keep going. <clears throat> and uh, 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 let's leave it there. But let's thank our sponsors one more time. Volkswagen, McDonald's, oh, Gord's, oh, oh, oh. for Chris Folds, for Magic Mike, and for Billach Amardi. We'll see you last week. <laughs>